almost got me. Hey, there's something I could sure use. Vitamins for strength. Directions. Take one each day for health and vitality. I wonder if they work for us little ants. Hmm. Can't hurt to try. If one a day will do as good as it says, ten of them should do ten times as good. You know what they say. Everything comes to him who waits. So who am I to argue? I'll wait. Hey, Ann, I know you're still in there. Better give up and save us both a lot of trouble. I know that direct approach never works, but it doesn't hurt to try. How do you like that? After all these years, it finally worked. Oh, boy, these vitamins are great. I feel like a million. You're stretching things too far, Ant. Now maybe you'll show us Ants a little more respect. Ooh, you'll make me so mad. I'll give you such a chop. Okay, Ant, whether you like it or not, I'm making you a member of the club. It looks like I couldn't convince him. Boy, I sure like these vitamins. I don't know what it is that makes that ant so tough, but whatever it is, I had enough. I'm coming in after you. You know, this ain't no ordinary ant. You're so right. I used to think if you saw one ant, you saw another. But I never saw an ant like this. Now maybe I can have some peace. Hey, ant, if you won't come out like an ordinary ant, I'll have to use force. <laughs> That's what I call a heavy ant. Aha, uh -huh. just as I thought. I know you're in there, Ant. Come out. Stupid horseshoe. What's that? It's a bomb. I'm telling you, 
That was a narrow escape. Okay, this is your last chance to be an ordinary ant. Yeah, I know. In the meantime, I'm hungry. Go get me some lunch. You mean, me get your lunch? What do you think I am, your waiter? Well, in that case, may I take your order, sir? This is humiliating. That's what it is. I never thought it would happen to me, an aardvark bringing lunch to an ant. Do you? Hmm. Hmm. A very fine lunch. Oh, hey, aardvark, I might be hungry again right after I take a little nap. So stick around. Uh oh, I lost all my muscles. The vitamins must have worn off. I better go get some more. Aha, uh -huh. so that's how he got so strong. With vitamins. You see, eh? you're up against an Ardvark superior intellect. I know you got your vitamins down there. I knew it all the time. Without your muscles, you're a coward. Ah, I saw you, eh? I saw you hide in that truck. You see, you could have saved yourself a lot of trouble if you gave yourself up like an ordinary ant. This time, there's no way out. I got you trapped. Oh, I wouldn't count on that. Who? Oh, oh, oh. Couldn't we talk this over, Ant? Who? Oh, 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 oh. What's this stuff? Some cereal. It's supposed to be good for you. Did you try it? I'm not gonna try it. You try it. I'm not gonna try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. When you bring life home, don't tell the kids it's one of those nutritional cereals you've been trying to get them to eat. You're the only one who has to know. Mr. French. Soon another ship will be sent to the bottom. Well, gang, we're on our way to our big gig at Pago Pago Island. How do you like it? I'd like to throw you over the side for getting us stuck in this old rust bucket, brother dear. Rust bucket? I thought this was a ship. <laughs> it looks more like an accident going someplace to happen. Oh, stop complaining, Alexandra. Once we get to Pago Pago, you'll forget all about how we got here. Huh. There'll be nothing to forget. I can see now that this trip is going to be strictly Dollsville.
life. It's so relaxing. And so romantic. And so sickening. The captain sends his compliments. And four aprons, two swabs, and two buckets. Now get to work. Work? He can't mean us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I uh, forgot to tell you. I didn't have enough money for the fare, so we have to work our way over. Well, if that's the case, the first thing I'm going to do is work on you, brother. Now, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Now to give the order to attack. Wow! It looks like we're going to spend most of the trip washing and drying dishes. What do you want to do, Alexandra? Wash or dry? Neither. I'll supervise. wise guy. I've been shish -kebobbed. Hey, what's that? I don't know. Now I'll have to dry the dishes all over again. Forget the dishes. We've got to get out of here. Ah! We've been rammed. All hands abandon ship. Yipes! We're sinking! I've got to save the instruments. And I've got to save me! <laughs> Anchors away! Oh, lucky we landed on a lumpy old pillow. Who are you calling a lumpy old pillow? Oh! Hey, wait for me! Are you all right? Yeah, as long as you're here to comfort me, Josie. If anyone's going to comfort Alan, it's going to be me. Move aside, you crazy redhead. Ow! Oh, oh, what's oh. happening? The fog's coming in. Stay close together. Somebody steer this thing! <laughs> Mark up another victim for Captain Nemo. Thanks to you, Alexandra, we're lost in a fog. You mean thanks to Josie. If she wasn't so clumsy, she wouldn't have fallen on the motor switch. I wonder if we'll ever see land again. Don't worry. I'll keep a sharp lookout. Hey, I think we ran into a shoe. Shoe nothing. We ran into a sea monster. Look! Yikes! Relax, chicken brother. This is no sea monster. It's some kind of a kooky sub. And don't look now, but I think we have company. Don't mind us. Uh, we're just leaving. Stop there! Come on, let's get out of here. Hey, we're caught in seaweed. What do you think you're doing, you creeps? Wait till I get my hands on you. I'll show you. Silence! You are the prisoners of Captain Nemo. Captain who? You gotta be joking. Captain Nemo lived over a hundred years ago. I never joke. The first Nemo was my great-grandfather. He sailed in a submarine exactly like this one, sinking ships foolish enough to cross his path. So you're the ding -a -ling that sank our ship. And it's only the beginning. I am going to avenge the name of Nemo by sinking every ship in the world until I am the master of the seven seas. Well, what are you going to do with us? 
Unfortunately, you're of no use. We're useful. We're useful, Honest. We are useful. What can you do? Let's show him, girl. Your quick change, artists? No. We're pussycats, silly. Listen. It doesn't look like Nemo digs the groovy sound. What that group needs is a new leader. Come on, let's pick up the beat. Faster, faster! Enough! Hey, what's the big idea? I was just getting in the groove. You ruined their act, Alexandra. And I'm not waiting for an encore. Let's swing out of here. Wait for me. The prisoners are trying to escape. Sound the alarm. Follow me. I'll lead you to safety. Hey. It's Valerie, Josie, and Melody. Nice going, Alexandra. Now you got us all in the brig. <laughs> Take them to the diving well. Hey, what's the big idea of locking us in these glass tubes? They are your transportation for a one-way trip to the bottom of the ocean, my curious friends. It's my own special way to get rid of unwanted pests. Oh, you've made a big mistake. We're not pests. We're pussycats. What are you going to do with Sebastian, you creep? Ah, uh, yes. The cat. <laughs> I like his style. He stays. Sebastian, you're a traitor. <laughs> <laughs> She always manages to get next to Alan. Trapped at the bottom of the sea. This is awful. I'll say. We forgot our instruments. Now that I'm rid of those meddlers, I can head back to my secret fortress on Volcano Island. <laughs> control buttons, maybe we'd find out. I don't see what the big fuss is all about. Just push anyone. Volcano. Oh, a 
yacht club? It's no yacht club, Melody. It's Nemo's secret sub base. And look, they're stashing our instruments in cold storage. Gee, with no instruments, there's no Josie and the Pussycat. No big loss. <laughs> well, we got to think of a way to get the instruments back and put Nemo out of business to boot. Well, think no further. Alexander the Great has the most stupendous, super colossal plan this side of Corny Island. Oh, that's a wonderful plan, Alexander. I haven't told you what it is yet. Alan, you take Josie, Melody, and Alexandra and sneak into the storage room and grab the instruments. Now, while that's going on, Valerie very cleverly gets aboard the sub and discombobulates the engine. It'll be a cinch. Wait a minute. You left out one small detail. What's that? Just what are you going to do? Who, me? I'm going to stay here and hide. What else? <laughs> Come on. I hate to admit it, but my bragging brother was right. This is a cinch. Yeah. I guess they don't believe in guards. Yikes! Then what's that coming our way? <laughs> Zapping zappers. That's some kind of a laser sentry. Let's split before it splits us. Laser Sentry has discovered intruders. But no matter, for soon it will eliminate them. That crazy contraption is gaining on us. Quick, into the emergency hospital up ahead. Doctor, we have a patient. Hmm, it looks like a sick laser sentry. And he doesn't look well either. <laughs> hmm, very interesting. Its toggle switch has toggleitis. Prepare for a toggleectomy. Hammer. 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 Nail file. Nail file. Nail file. <laughs> Look at that Josie. She gets to be Alan's nurse, and I get stuck watching the door. <laughs> How long does it take to discombobulate a sub-engine? Keep cool, Alexander. I'm going as fast as I can. There seems to be something wrong with the laser sentry. I had better find out what it is. How are we doing, Doctor? I'm doing fine, but I'm not so sure about the patient. That does it. It's time Alan had a new nurse. Namely, me. Sebastian, take the air hose from that helium tank and blow up Josie like a balloon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Josie will float up and out of the picture, and I'll move in. <laughs> Josie, how could you say such a thing? What's going on in here? What are you doing with my laser sentry? Would you believe we're tuning it up? And would you believe I'm gonna pop? It's those meddlers. Gods, capture them! Oh, oh no, no, you don't! Run for it! This'll fix them good. Now, here's what I want you to do. Plug the blue wire in socket A, the red wire in socket B, and the green wire in socket C. Gotcha. Now, is it red in C, green in A, and blue in white, and B in D? Oh, I'm so nervous, I'm all mixed up. Maybe I just better plug them all in. Oh!
that net at yourself as well. <laughs> The Coast Guard can't thank you kids enough for putting an end to Nemo and his gang. It was our pleasure. <laughs> ah, foiled by a bunch of pussycats. Hey, isn't this great? The Coast Guard is going to give us a ride to Pago Pago. Well, for laughing at me, I'm not going anywhere on the same ship with you toads. Well, sis, as usual, you get your way. Me and my big mouth. <laughs> steps to get to this Capitol building here in Washington. Well, I wonder who that sad little scrap of paper is. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, it's a long, long journey to the Capitol City. It's a long, long wait while I'm sitting in committee. But I know I'll be a law someday, at least I hope and pray that I will. But today I am still just a bill. Gee, Bill, you certainly have a lot of patience and courage. Well, I got this far. When I started, I wasn't even a bill. I was just an idea. Some folks back home decided they wanted a law passed, so they called their local congressman, and he said, you're right, there ought to be a law. Then he sat down and wrote me out and introduced me to Congress, and I became a bill. And I'll remain a bill until they decide to make me a law. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I got as far as Capitol Hill. Well, now I'm stuck in committee, and I'll sit here and wait while a few key congressmen discuss and debate whether they should let me be a law. I hope and pray that they will, but today I am still just a bill. Listen to those congressmen arguing. Is all that discussion and debate about you? Yeah, I'm one of the lucky ones. Most bills never even get this far. I hope they decide to report on me favorably, otherwise I may die. Die? Yeah, die in committee. Oh, but it looks like I'm going to live. Now I go to the House of Representatives and they vote on me. If they vote yes, what happens? Then I go to the Senate and the whole thing starts all over again. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And if they vote for me on Capitol Hill, well, then I'm off to the White House where I'll wait in a line with a lot of other bills for the president to sign. And if he signs me, then I'll be along. I hope and pray that he will. But today I am still just a bill. You mean even if the whole Congress says you should be a law, the president can still say no? Yes, that's called a veto. If the president vetoes me, I have to go back to Congress and they vote on me again, and by that time you're so By old, that time, it's very unlikely that you become a law. It's not easy to become a law, is it? No, but how I hope and pray that I will, but today I am still just a bill. He signed your bill, now you're a law. Oh, yes! When you think of New York City, you think of liberty. When you think of San Francisco, came the cards you see. From the Hawaiian to Pacific to New England, Sean Morris. When you think of toys for your family, think of our stores. When you think of 
Ensure domestic tranquility Provide for the common defense Promote the general welfare And secure the blessings of liberty To ourselves and our posterity Do ordain and establish this constitution For the United States of In 1787, I'm told, our founding fathers all sat down and wrote a list of principles that's known the world around. The USA was just starting out a whole brand new country, and so our people spelled it out. They wanted a land of liberty, and the preamble goes like this. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution. With Ronald McDonald. Good morning, class. Good, Good morning, morning, Ronald. Today's subject, the Hamburglar. <gasps> the Hamburglar is very clever and very sneaky. The Hamburglar! And he loves taking McDonald's hamburgers. So, what should you yell when Nobody you see it? Help Ronald Sailor! That's right. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Hamburglar. It's a good time for the train You've got a lot to learn. <laughs> Don't take burgers, Rubble Rubble. <laughs> Our story opens today in, of all places, the headquarters of the Frostbite Falls Voice Boinder Company, makers of first-class voice boinders for home and industry. Gentlemen, there's a great question to be decided here today. Yes, yes Mr. Mr. Brett? On it may rest the future of our beloved company. What's what the, the question, question, Mr. Brett? When shall we have the company picnic? Oh, the fourth of July. Uh, Groundhog Day. day. Uh, uh, very well, time. gentlemen, very well. We'll compromise and hold it on my birthday. Yes, yes Mr. Mr. Brett. One question, sir. Keep it short, Parkinson. Will it rain that day? Rain. Oh, oh dear, no. That is a puzzle, Parkinson. What about asking Bullwinkle Moose if it's going to rain? Excellent idea, Lumpley. Thank you, sir. Glad I thought of it. Miss Bleen, get me Bullwinkle J. Moose. And in a flash, a call went from the town's largest industrial plant to one of its smallest houses. Hello? Rocky the Flying Squirrel speaking. Oh, it's for you, Bullwinkle. Somebody else wants a weather forecast. Oh, bad stairs. Just when I was catching up on my reading. The Bobsy Twins at the seashore. Yeah, you can't beat the classics, I only see. Hello. Mr. Moose, Pongo Britt here. Will there be precipitation on my natal day? Uh, 
All depends if you leave it out in the rain or not. I mean, will it rain on my birthday? Oh. The date is June 10th. June 10th, let's see. June... Oh, oh! Bad, eh? Terrible. My bunion just got an awful twinge to it. It couldn't be wrong. Sir, you are speaking of my own personal prophesying bunion. Oh, of course, my apologies. Well, gentlemen, I'll just have to change the date. For the picnic, Mr. Brett? No, for my birthday. Yes, yes Mr. Mr. Brett. Brett. Yes, strange though it seems, Bullwinkle's bunion is the chief weather forecaster for all of Frostbite Falls. Yes? Mr. Moose, how about our double header tomorrow? The paper says showers. Well, my bunion says play ball. Thanks to Bullwinkle's bunion, no Frostbite Falls baseball game has ever been rained out. No picnic has ever been spoiled by showers. But can't he do something about ants? As a result, Bullwinkle gets calls at all times of the day and night. Hello, can Mr. Moose make a forecast? Well, he's asleep. Why don't you call the weatherman? I am the weatherman. Yes, each night, Bullwinkle sleeps the dreamless sleep of a moose well loved by the whole community. Or he did, until one night when two mysterious figures crept close to the cottage, eased open a window, and slipped inside. Hey, what are you guys... In a flash, Rocky had been bound and gagged, and the figures turned their attention to the slumbering Bullwinkle. You ready with that sleeping potion, Hadley? Ready, Norbert. Let him have it. You dope, you're supposed to take it out of the bottle first. It worked, didn't it? Come on, we got no time to lose. Which is the hoof with the bunion on it? This one. Okay, let's get started. And while a baffled Rocky watched helplessly, the figures wrapped Bullwinkle's hoop in cotton batting and excelsior and then built a small packing case around it. Unfortunately, Bullwinkle chose that moment to come too. Golly, my hoof looks like it's packed to send to somebody. Right you are, palsy. Any objections? Uh, couldn't I have it gift wrapped? Hadley, the sleeping potion. Come on up. And pour it out at a bottle faced. Like this? Yeah. Now I'll give it to him. Right. I give up. Let's go. And be careful of that prize Tootsie. So carrying the unconscious moose and this carefully packaged Tootsie, the mysterious figures crept away into the night, leaving a furious Rocky thrashing helplessly behind them. Well, <laughs> things have gone wrong in a hurry, haven't they? I'm sure you'll want to see our next episode, The Male Animal, or Bullwinkle Stamps His Foot. And now... Hey, Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. But that trick never worked. This time for sure. Presto! Well, I'm getting close. And now it's time for another special feature. <laughs> Tuning up your instrument, son? Huh? Oh, <laughs> hi, Pop. I uh, didn't see you standing there. Yeah, so I noticed you're supposed to be practicing, aren't you? Oh, gee, Dad. Shooting arrows is much more fun. Besides, I can't play this thing. You could if you practiced. Remember, <coughs> practice makes perfect, which reminds me of a fable. Everything reminds you of a fable, doesn't it, Pop? Uh, well, almost everything. This fable is called The Canary and the Musical Hares. Rabbits are very talented people, especially two rabbits who were musicians. Year after year, they toured the forest, delighting the citizens with their virtuosity. Well, Johann, what'll we start off with today? How about Beethoven's 46th? Beethoven never wrote a 46th. <laughs> Does it matter? No, it didn't matter, for you see, those two rabbits had stumbled upon a great idea. Although they went through the motions of playing, not a sound did they produce. This, of course, fascinated the audience. They came from far and wide to stare in wonder at the silent orchestra. You are? You were flat in the introduction. I know. It's my E string. Too much resin. The close of the performance never failed to bring a rousing tribute from the onlookers, along with a monetary appreciation. Hey, keep your eyes open for an Indian head nickel. I'm saving them. Okay, you keep your eyes open for a nickel headed Indian. I am saving them. As usual, the tour was a magnificent success. In forest after forest, it was the same old story, standing room only. And then the trouble began. The boys were halfway through Gershwin's Rhapsody in Brown when suddenly out of nowhere a canary appeared on the stage and began to sing. 
The hares were shocked, and so was the audience. Somehow or other, didn't seem right to hear music coming from the stage. Kick! Shoot him! What with, my cello? And it was too late anyway. One by one, the audience wandered off, and the concert was a resounding flop. Well, uh, thanks a lot, Canary. I guess you know you just ruined our performance. Yeah, what's the big idea? I want to sing with your band. What? We don't have no use for singers. Yeah, go see Lawrence Elk or somebody. And with that, the two hares packed their instruments and departed for the site of their next concert. Ah, but that canary was not to be denied. It's him again. Quick, hit him in the head with some bird seed before the audience walks out on us again. Yeah, but unfortunately they had no bird seed and no audience. Hmm, nice going, Canary. You did it again? Yeah, I got a good mind I'm to... sorry, fellas, but I just gotta sing. And with your band. Well, I guess we got no alternative but to hire you. What? Come on, let's, uh, get some sleep. Ludwig, the trombone-playing hare, had a devilish plan in mind. Psst. Johan. Psst. What? Now's our chance to get rid of the canary. Take this rocket, tie it to his foot, and light it. You better do that, Ludwig. I'm not very good at this sort of thing. It's easy. Look, this is my foot, right? Yeah. And this is the rocket, right? Yeah. You tie the rocket to the foot like this, right? Yeah. Then you light it. The foot? The rocket. You mean like this? Yeah. <laughs> Johan. Yeah. Look, we got to give that bird the air. Sure, what do you got in mind? Well, if you'll notice, we are standing on a cliff. Directly below stands the canary. Now, you go down and engage him in conversation. While you are so engaged, I will drop this boulder on him. It was a splendid plan, unfortunately, five minutes later. Well, did I get him? Nine, he got tired of talking to me. He wandered off. Where is the rock? What rock? The rock I pushed off the cliff. You didn't push any rock off the cliff. I did too. You didn't. I did. Didn't. Did. Didn't. Did. It was obvious that the canary would always be an integral part of the group. It was also obvious that another failure was imminent. Ah, but fate was kind, though, for out of nowhere a sudden cloudburst appeared, deluging musicians, audience, and canary alike. And... Just as suddenly, the cloudburst departed, leaving a mighty soaked concert. It also left something else, a case of laryngitis with the canary. Yes, sir, no matter how hard he tried to sing, the poor bird couldn't utter a note. The hares were back in business again. What's more, before every appearance, they sprinkled their vocalists with a generous supply of water, thus ensuring laryngitis. And a silent concert. And that's why I always say practice makes perfect. I don't think that moral fits, Pop. You don't, eh? No, I, I got a better one. A bird in the band is worth two in the bush. Uh, let's shoot some arrows, son. <laughs> lesson is mighty important, remember? Bullwinkle is a... Not that lesson. <coughs> this lesson. <laughs> Greetings, you culture bugs. Today's poem is called The Daffodils. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, continuous as the stars that... Hey. Can't you read the sign, buddy? Well, certainly. What sign? The one behind those daffodils. This one that says, do not pick flowers? That's the one. Well, there I was, Your Honor, wandering lonely as a cloud that floats... Hmm. Thirty daffodils, eh? That will be thirty dollars and thirty days. Now oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon my bright blue eye, as I sit here in solitude. <laughs> and then my heart with anger fills. A dollar apiece for daffodils? And now it's time for... Four, five, or six baritone solos in the key of E. But... If my... Ooh. Features. Should have tried E flat. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello out there. Peabody and Sherman in here. Where are we going today, Mr. Peabody? Mexico, my boy. The year is 1910, and the famous person we'll take a date with is Pancho Villa. The way back whisked us back through the decades to a bandit camp in the Mexico Badlands. It was obvious that Pancho was having trouble with his men. Pancho, you know we love you like a bandit, but how come all the time you're feeding us jumping beans? Because Gonzalez beans is all we got. Well, if this keeps up, Pancho, we gonna jump ourselves over to some other leader. Don't be silly, boys. Jumping is good for you. Gives you exercise. We don't want no exercise. Tell you what Pancho gonna do. I gonna ramp down, get mucho pesos, and buy beans that don't make you jump. Better yet, stick up the town and buy tamales. I don't like beans no more. Very well, I do it. The nearest town was El Famino, undoubtedly the most poverty-stricken metropolis in the world. Sherman, we must warn these people Pancho Villa is on his way, and we'll start with that street cleaner. Who's a street cleaner? I am the mayor. Oh, I beg your pardon, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you better tell your citizens that Pancho Villa is coming to rob you. Oh, no, he ain't. Why not? Because we got nothing he can rob us of. This town is destitute, poor, bankrupted, broke. What are you keeping that bank? <laughs> That's not a bank. It's a motel. Mr. Mayor, have you any idea what Pancho Villa will do if he robs you and doesn't get any money? Sure. He'll take an eye on you. He'll destroy the town. Well, if that's the way it's going to be, that's the way it's going to be. Excuse me, senors, but I have a luncheon engagement around the corner. What do we do, Mr. Peabody? Well, there must be some money in the town, Sherman, and it's up to us to raise it. Just then, Pancho rode in. Stick him up, town. Uh, Mr. Villa, I wonder if you could come back at three. Three? Can you give me one good reason why, senor? Because the town doesn't have any money to give you now, but by three it will have. That's not a bad reason. Okay, I come back at three. <laughs> Vamanos, caballo. Our first step was the El Famino Bank. You wish a room, senor? The mayor was right. This is a motel. We got special this week on safety deposit boxes. They're very comfortable, senors. Look, my good man, if I were to hold you up, what would I get? A sore back. I weigh 200 pounds. No, no, Mr. Peabody means that if he held you up with a gun, what would he get? Excuses. Nothing but excuses. You have no money, then? No one in El Famino has money, except maybe old man Moss. He's a millionaire. Oh? Sure, he saved money all his life. I bet you he's got at least a buck and a half salted away. The Moe's Rancho was located on the very edge of town. We approached the rancho, and there on the porch sat old man Moe, kicking the bucket. Mr. Moe, Pancho Villa is going to hold up the town at three, and unless he gets money, he'll wipe out everything. Would you be willing to donate a dollar or so? I would be most happy to, but all my money is tied up in food. Food? Hmm, I wonder what Pancho would say to that. Food is all right. I was going to buy food with the money anyway. What kind of food you got, senor? Jumping beans. Twenty crates of them. Senors, if I was to take these beans to my men, they would jump me to death. Well, I guess I got to wipe the town out. Who's got a match? I can't let you do that, Pancho. I was willing to let you get away with a loan of a dollar or two to prevent any violence, but as for wiping El Tamino out... How are you going to stop me? With this! <laughs> I produced a photograph of a fascinating senorita, one whose beauty was enough to overcome any man. Pancho Villa took one look at it and promptly fell asleep. And, strangely enough, so did all the other gentlemen in that area. We removed the desperado's guns and sent him riding off where he came from. But suppose he comes back! We'll leave this picture with the town. Pancho will fall asleep every time he sees it. But I don't understand, Mr. Peabody. Why does everyone fall asleep when they look at this? It's an old Spanish custom, Sherman. It is? Of course. This girl's name is Esther. And you know that when you siesta, you fall asleep.
Last time you remember, Bo Winkle's weather forecasting bunion had got him and his pal Rocky in a peck of trouble. Two mysterious figures entered their little house, tied and gagged Rocky, and used a sleeping potion on Bo Winkle while it was still in the bottle. Then they carefully packed up Bo Winkle's hoof and carried it, and him, out of the house and into the night. Sometime later, Rocky managed to free himself and grabbed the telephone to call for help. Hello, Sheriff Wright. This is Rocky. Two fellas just came in here and took... Oh, hello, Mabel. Well, I'd like to talk to... Well, I'm fine, thanks. Could I speak... No, he's not so good. Somebody... No, it's not a cold in the antlers. Somebody stole his bunion. Oh, never mind. I'll go see the sheriff. And in a twinkling, Rocky was zooming low over the rooftops of Frostbite Falls on his way to the sheriff's office. I gotta hurry. Who knows where they're taking Bullwinkle or why? Good questions, those, for at that moment, at a nearby deserted airstrip, the unconscious form of Bullwinkle Moose was being loaded aboard a fast plane. All set, you guys. Take off. And the plane zoomed skyward as Bullwinkle gruggily began to recover. Uh, let me off at 17th Street, please. You bet, fella. Hey, what's this on my hoof? I, it's the latest thing in most shows. Yeah, notice the continental styling, the interesting texture. Peachy, I think I'll step outside and look at it in the day room. Grab him, Hadley. You fellas ought to get that step fixed. Fella could get an injury. Get him back in the plane, Hadley. Plane? Uh-huh. I begin to see the light. Unfortunately, Bowwinkle didn't see it for very long. Meanwhile, back in Frostbite Falls, Rocky and Sheriff Wright had just followed a double set of footprints to the edge of the airstrip. Looks like they took him away in a plane, Rocky. Well, let's go after him. Can't do it, Rocky. Why not, Sheriff? See that there dotted line there? Yeah. That there's a state border. I got no authority over that line. You mean? Yep. You're making a federal case out of it, Rocky. Well, then there's only one thing to do. I'm going straight to Washington. And the plucky squirrel began a frenzied flight to the nation's capital to enlist the aid of the federal government. But you gotta help me. My buddy and his bunion have been swiped, and we... Hmm, let me look it up in the directory. My buddy, my buddy. Yes, that would come under the Veterans Administration. Is this the Veterans Administration? Right. So you want to re-enlist, eh, soldier? Wonderful. No, sir. You see, my buddy and his bunion have been swiped. Hold it, and... hold it, hold it. Let's see now. Bunion, bunion. Ah, yes. Check with the health department. Is this the health department? Of course. Open your mouth and say ah. But. Not but, say ah. Ah. Hold it. Uh, uh, mm, you need glasses. I have glasses. So you do. You see, my buddy and his bunion were swiped. Swiped, swiped. Have you tried the FBI? No, but I will. Is this the. We'll ask the questions, fella. Name? Rocky. Occupation? I'm a squirrel. Mm -hmm. Problem? My buddy, his bunion, swiped. Tried missing persons? I was already there. Well, that's the nice thing about Washington. What's that? You always travel in the right circles. And while Rocky desperately tries to get some assistance in his plight, the plane bearing Bullwinkle and his weather-wise bunion is traveling out over the ocean on its way to who knows where. Don't look at me, Jack. I'm not tipping off the plot. <laughs> To give or get the favorite all over town The hit of the day when you're ready to play Everyone knows it's Slinky It's Slinky, it's Slinky For fun it's the best of the toys It's Slinky, it's Slinky The favorite of girls and boys Boys and girls, more fun with Slinky Pull Toys, Slinky Caterpillar, Slinky Train, Slinky Hippopotamus. Everyone wants a Slinky Pull Toy.
that lets you create beautiful pictures with light. Light, light, it can be light. Work with colorful pegs that glow with light, light bulb not included. Make people, animals, things. And with refills, Bugs Bunny or Bozo the Clown. Light, light, it can be light. You can make lots of pretty pictures with Light Bright from Hasbro. Bunny and Tweety Show. Today in Malibu, California, a record-breaking sharp-nosed trowel faz was caught by Mr. Treg Brown. Mr. Brown's only comment was, "Twarn't nothing." Now that's what I call a real fisherman, Father. And just what do you mean by that remark, son? Well, you know what happens when you go fishing. We always end up eating beans. Oh, yeah? Well, it just so happens that among cat fishermen, I'm top dog. Uh, uh, the top cat. Oh, Father, really? A skeptic, eh? Well, you come along with me and I'll prove it. I'll show you how a real fisherman operates. Oh, Father, there's a swell spot to fish. That's too much work, son. Over there's our spot. But that's an aquarium, Father, and besides, it's closed. Only to the public, Junior, not to us. Come on. I hope you know what you're doing, Father. Oh, boy, Father, now let's go after the big ones. Uh, just a second, son. Before we tackle the big ones, uh, let's have an appetizer. Well, that would be peachy, but... No buts. Just pay close attention. Look, son, no hands. Yes. 
Come on, son. We wouldn't want them. No meat on them. They're all teeth. Now here's a tank that's just loaded with goodies. Are you gonna skin dive, Father? Sure. It's the best way to catch these little ones. There goes a smart pussycat. Fathers get into trouble like this, but I doubt it. Who's teaching who to fish around here? Give me that! I don't think I'll ever understand, grown-ups. Father! Oh, Father, look! I caught a fish! You call that a fish? Why, it isn't even big enough to bait a hook. Hmm, maybe we can use it. I just thought of a trick I saw on TV. I get a feeling that a disaster is about to happen. Keep your eyes peeled, Junior, and I'll show you how to catch a big one. My father, swallowed by a fish. What can I tell the fellas in Troop 6? No oversized sardines gonna keep me cooped up. told me he was such an athlete. Bravo, Father! You scored the winning basket! Bravo, bravo! Aw, oh, knock it off and get me out of here! All right, son. Start pumping. I hope he knows what he's doing. I sure don't. Where there's so many fishes. Oh, very dangerous. to the dogs. Excuse me, but you have to be quiet or... Hey! I didn't see you come in. If you haven't got a ticket, I must ask you to weave. Ask me to weave? What about you? Where's your ticket, Mac? 
Me? Uh, I don't have a ticket. No ticket? It must be here someplace. No ticket, eh? Well, you've got one now. You know how fast you were coming down that aisle? No, officer. Real fast and weaving, and you've only got one headlight. Why, there might have been kids playing in the aisle. You're in some big trouble, that's all I know. Oh, Mr. Officer, sir, please give me a break. You see, I was just... Hey! You're that screwy wabbit that snuck in here. Seven bucks for a movie. The price for an evening of pure aisle entertainment is preposterous. I could better spend an evening in the library, which is why I always carry this. Sneak into my theater, will you, you wascoey wabbit? Wabbit? Pardon, mon frere, but this is the rabbit you seek. I'm no rabbit. Well, if he's no rabbit, then where are his ears? Yeah, Einstein. If I'm no rabbit, then where am I? Oh, no. Uh-uh. End of discussion. I've come too far. I'm above all that now. But not above sneaking into movie theaters. Yeah, but not above sneak... Are you going to stand around jabbering all day? Catch this guy! Attaboy, Robespierre! Capture the scoundrel! Let justice prevail! He's getting away! Say, have you seen a wabbit one by here? No, I haven't, Mac. But what can I get you? Well, I am kind of hungry. How about a large popcorn? And a medium soft drink. Would you like genuine artificial imitation butter flavor on your popcorn? Look, my little gluttonous friend! Does anything here appear to be out of the ordinary? They're all out of gumdrops? Let me make it easy for you, Sherlock. This is the rabbit! Hey, you're white. After him! Two sheets down front. Hey, we're in pictures. <laughs> It's a miracle to get into pictures, and now these two jokers want to get out. Hey, look, who am I making like? Who am I making like? Eh. What's up, Doc? <laughs> oh, my, that was clever, clever. Oh, my, 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 very clever, very, very, very. Mmm, this looks good. <laughs> Cucumbers, say, mmm. And turnips. Well, potatoes. I love potatoes. Oh, I'm taking some of these, too. Delicious, isn't it? But have you tried the pumpkin today? Pumpkin? 
my nose. Well, here, have some. You know, you don't look at all well. Have you had your iron today? Iron? Why, no, I haven't. Well, here. <laughs> Well, to the little Carmen. See you tomorrow, head of honey. <laughs> Shall we? Surely. Once again, me razor keen mind comes to me rescue. Radishes, I love them. Simply love them. Starch, starch. Makes you magic, though. I wouldn't. No, indeed. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Look, strawberries. Strawberries. Oh, no, 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 no. They make you break out in a regular rash, you know. Well, celery, my favorite. I just simply adore celery. Ah, now I have got them exactly where <laughs> they want me. Shall we? Surely. from this precarious position. Woof! Woof! Stunning, isn't it? carrots all to ourselves well um now i wouldn't say that <laughs> Here we see the rhinoceros, found in the African veldt. The rhino is a powerful animal, treacherous, ill-tempered, savage, thick-skinned, dumb. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Morning, Terry. 
Hi, George. This handsome creature is the Bengal tiger, native to India and French Indochina. His every action is poetry, emotion, truly a regal specimen. If you look quickly to the right, you will see a specimen of the North American skunk. And in this cage, we see the rare and only specimen of the Tweety bird. This bird is very tame and lovable. And right this way from the monkey cages. I told I told a pretty cat. I did, I did call a pretty cat. You can't get me here, you bad pretty cat. Cedric, didn't you like your dinner? <clears throat> A peculiar taste <clears throat> keeps coming back on me. You ought to watch what you eat, Cedric. Hello, Mr. Elephant. Would you like a peanut? Here's a nice one for you.
twist. <laughs> Suffering like a test. What a fine time I pick to go on a diet. <laughs> Better hurry. I just got there to need ten minutes to catch my plane. Hold everything, Faso! This is your lucky day. Opportunity is nothing. But I've got a, a, a very important appointment. I'll say you have. My card. Yes, sir. Daffy Duck, personal representative of the most sensational discovery since the Sweater Girl. He's colossal, stupendous. One might even go so far as to say he's mediocre. I give you that paragon of pep and personality, Sleepy Lagoon. a packed house. The kid's on. The orchestra gives him a four-bar vamp, and the kid gives it to him like this. I'm just wild about Harry, and Harry's wild about me. My, the heavenly blisses of his kisses fills me with ecstasy. That's just a rough idea, you understand. He's the sweetest chocolate candy, and just like honey from a bee. Oh, I'm just wild about Harry, and he's wild about Ken. I do without he is from the south. Can't you hear me shout? Talking with my mouth, could you ever doubt? He's just wild about me. <laughs> the kid finishes mid thunderous applause. Hooray! Hey! He takes a bow. They're screaming for an encore. Encore! Give us more. We want more. Let's have more. Give us some more. Give us some more. Ah, oh, but does the kid give him another song? No. He makes with a band. Solo, like so. <laughs> Just a minute, Chubby. You ain't seen half of the kids' repertory. Well, here's one the kid does that you like. <laughs> Over here, 
Hunting over day, we're always on the dusty trail. Hunting fox and hunting quail. Tally ho, I am a hunting fool. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. My horse and I are of the finest breed. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Just like the wind, I ride my sword speed. Sure of foot, sure of eye. Peeling onions makes me cry. This makes no sense. So do I. So don't you go and beat me, Daddy Coombs, the nearest bar. Yeah. And now the kid goes into his finale. And what a finale. <laughs> All right, uh, l l let's see what the kid can do. Okay, Sleepy, do your stuff. Let's bring time blossoms bloom again. In the garden. Oh, oh. My heart. With the success of the recent Apollo space flights, man has been brought another step closer to the moon. Aboard these manned Apollo flights, three astronauts, and with them, Tang. Tang the energy breakfast drink with rich natural flavor and more vitamin C than orange juice. Still, Tang's biggest role isn't in NASA's space program. It's right here on Earth. Sugar Bear, I don't want to eat breakfast. Let me tell you a story, Billy. Once when I was a little bear, I told my mama bear, can't eat breakfast, gotta race the blob. Gonna beat you, Bear. And I raced him, and he raced me. Well, I finally pooped out. Uh, beat you, Bear. What you do? I learned my lesson. Now I start each day with a good breakfast featuring post soup sugar crisps. It's a honey sweet vitamin treat. The time, 1849, and the big gold rush. It was a big boom. The mother load was loaded, and new towns popped up across the land. And with the gold came the miners, and with the miners came trouble. <laughs> Boy McCoy, that's me. Ha, ha. And with trouble came the Fells Vargo troubleshooter, Special Agent Willoughby. That's me, folks. His job this time, go to Donut Center and bring back pretty boy McCoy. Center. What a hole! Pretty boy McCoy, I presume? Yeah, that's me. Special Agent Willoughby. I'm taking you in, and I want you to come quietly. Now you come along with me or I will be forced to use force. Put up your hands. Ah, uh, uh, this is a gun. I don't 
like you. No more handcuffs. Hmm. I guess I'll try my luck on the one-armed bandit. Now, but you're in trouble. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. I'd suggest you go jump in the lake. Yeah. I would advise you to use extreme haste and bury it over there. Poor soul, he can't win. Left four, uh, then seven right, uh, then a six to the left, then uh, the back four thing, uh, three to the right, five to the right, and ten to twelve, and half past nine. And... Pretty boy McCoy, come along now. Right always wins in the end. Giddy up, horsey. Once again, Special Agent Willoughby gets his man. Er, by the way, Mr. Willoughby, what about that dynamite? Uh, the dynamite? You and your big, fat mouth. Bowling sure makes me hot and thirsty. This is a job for Kool-Aid. Hey, Kool-Aid! Oh, yeah! Kool-Aid's here, bringing you fun. Kool-Aid's got thirst on the run. Get a big, wide, happy ear to ear. Kool-Aid brand soft drink, please. Kmart is your saving store. Where your dollar buys you more. Save on Kmart's Matchmates, a huge fashion selection, now one-third off. New for fall mix-and-match styles are marked down one-third during this great in-season sale. Choose from a beautiful collection of colorful coordinates and save one-third during the Matchmate in-season sale through Saturday at Kmart. Kmart is the saving plan. Heaven's to hilarity. This is it, sports fans. Participants even. Television's greatest array of stars. Laugh Olympics presents the round the world triple team competition between the Yogi Yahoois, the Scooby Doobies, and the really rotten's. The players are on the field, in the stadium even. So let's get on with it. Laugh Olympics. Greetings, sports fans. It's time for another exciting All-Star Laugh Olympics. 
First, we'll take you deep into the Everglades swamps in lovely downtown Florida. Then, straddling the road to China in mysterious Hong Kong, home of chop suey and Hong Kong fooey. What? Where today's events will be concluded. Now, back to the Everglades, where the Yogi Yahoo's are nearly rotten. And the Scooby Doobies will once again strive for the Laugh Olympic Gold Medal. The first event will be the water sizzling swamp buggy race. So, without further ado, take it away, Mildew and Snacklepuss. It's your on the scene reporters speaking to you directly from the swamp. Up to our necks in it, even. And here's Snagglepuss to introduce the contestants in the soggy merry-go-round. I'll do that. Then I'll do. But first, exit both of us straight down. And here, representing the Yogi Yahooies, is Grape A. Grape A. Grape A. How do you fit? Four tons of gargantua into an itsy bitsy swamp buggy, may I ask? Grapey. I see. Two tons each into two buggies. Next, driving for the Scooby Doobies is Scooby Dum. Dum 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 dum. The Dread Baron and Crapely represent the really rotten. <laughs> Here's the starting flag, so get going already. Go! And they're off! Watch it, you kooky canine. That's a swamp buggy, not a helicopter. Dum, 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 dum. The Rottens have just shot into the lead, literally burning off the water, while the ever-graceful Grape Ape gives a left-foot turn signal and keeps turning left. Back at the race, the Rottens are still up front, with Scooby Dum coming up. Oop, dum, dum, dum. In last place, it's Grape Ape, but he's coming back up in the race and moving up on the leaders. The Rottens are almost certain to win. But wait, Scooby Dum! Quick, Red Baron, a dirty trick. Relax. Out for the old motor, in with the new. And one rotten rocket blasting off. Snagglepuss, here at the finish line. Flash, a tornado, or a giant egg beater just went by. And here comes Great Bay and Scooby Dum, neck and neck. And Grape A bubbles under for first place. But what happened to the Rottens? But then who cares? An urgent cablegram from the South Pole, even. That wasn't a tornado or a giant egg beater crossing the finish line first. It was the really Rottens. So the results are in. The Rottens whirl into the lead with 25 points. The Yogi Yahoo is our second with 15. And the Scooby Doobies, 10 for third place. Moving right along, but still in the swamps, it's the water skiing contest, where the contestants are judged on their style and originality. Now, down to Wally Gator, an athlete born to the water, representing the Yogi Yahooies. And here we are for a pre-recorded interview. Wally, how do you keep in such great shape for water skiing? How oh, it's simple, you say. Every day, I practice outrunning a steaming bullet. <laughs> and leaping trees and a single bounce. All that? To keep in shape for water skiing? Oh, it's not for water skiing. I have to keep in shape, or somebody might change my shape to an alligator handbag shape, you know. <laughs> a little croc comedy there, you see. <laughs> We're here at the starting point with Babu from the Scooby team. Well, Babu, I hope you're not going to use any of your mixed-up magic. Of course not. I'm not even going to say a magic word. Not even once. What magic words? Yapple dapple. Oh, I said it. Listen, if we ever need a genie, don't call us. We'll call you. Ribbit. 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 Say, what is this? 
They wouldn't dare. A 4,000 horsepower race engine? Just a little extra power, just in case, darling. Listen, Mrs. Crately, that simply isn't sporting to have any extras. Extras? I don't see any extras. Do you see any extras? Well, now that you mention it, I don't see a thing. The next time I interview savages, I'll wear a crash helmet. And the contest begins with Huckleberry Hound driving and Wally Gator tailing along for the Yogis. And now, for the Scooby Doobies, it's that terrific teen angel, Taffy, in the boat with Babu skiing. Oh, this is fun! Keep your eyes open, Babu. There's a jump up ahead. <laughs> He won't jump far with his feet stuck in iron glue. Right, Awful? Approaching the ramp. Oh, Taffy's boat is stuck. But not our teen angel. Babu is hitting the ramp at full speed. And flat. <laughs> Amazing. A 3,000-foot jump without boat or skis. Oh, no, Babu. We'll need a boat to finish. One little boat coming up. Yapple Dapple! <laughs> oh, boy! Oh, Baboo, you really did it! And now to the Rottens. It's Mrs. Creepley and Son driving with Mumbly on the skis. Mumbly's taking no chances on losing his tow rope. And there he goes! <laughs> Sportscaster again. Tell us, Mumbly, what do you have to say about your showing? Wait, what's this? Mumbly is winding up his performance in flawless style. You know, there's something rotten about all this. Congratulations, darling, you did it. And Mama is so proud of her little boy. Eh, it was nothing, Ma. Spoken like a really rotten, right, darling? <laughs> Wait a minute. Are my eyes deceiving me? Twin mumblies? Back to the scoreboard. The points have been tallied. Based on style and originality, it's a tie with each team scoring 20 points. And the rotten still hold the lead. <laughs> Is there no justice here? You tell him, Blue Falcon. I just did, Dog Wonder. Cheaters always pay. You're right, Blue Falcon. And the Rottens will really pay. A ten-point penalty for illegal equipment, ten points for blowing the ski ramp, and twenty points for double contestants. Is that the yes? There is justice here. <laughs> yes, Dog Wonder. Now let go of my arm. And so the score after two events. The Yogi Yahooies, 35, Scooby Doobies, 30, and the Really Rotten's Hit Bottom with five. And now to our next super laugh living event at the Nitona Beach Speedway, where the famous 501-mile auto race is already in progress. And what an exciting race it's been. As they speedily speed toward the finish line, it looks to me like the pigstyle special's coming in. Smells that way, even. Let's switch to the more bounce to the ounce power, Speedy. Okay. In a last-second rally, Speed Buggy bounces ahead. Across to win, taking 25 points for first place. In second place, it's the Really Rottens for 15 points. What happened to Hawking? Yeah, verily. Where did he go? Vanish even. I demand a replay. By popular demand, we now bring you a frame-by-frame -frame instant replay. Starring Hokey Wolf. It was the beginning of the last lap when Hokey got up in the air and drove into Daisy Mayhem's smoke screen. What? Hold it. What's this? A huge plant dropped into the cloud. Pull Hokey out and up to a dirigible where he was held up and out of the race. Yes, folks, it was another really rotten trip. <laughs> That's what happened on the track.
track. Now, let's see what's happening at the scoreboard. The Scoobies win brings them up to 55. The Rottens, with 15 points for second, brings them to 20. And the Yogis, with 10 for third, brings them up to 45. However, because the Rottens carnap the Yogis' entry, their 15 points will be given to the Yogi Yahooies instead. That makes the final scorers the Yogi Yahooies in first with 60 points, the Scooby Doobies second with 55, while the Really Rottens remain in third place with five. But this is only the first half. But there's lots more to come. Another half even. Yes, later this morning, we go to China, where Hong Kong will be the scene of the final events. Don't go away. We'll be back with the thrill-packed conclusion of today's all-star Lap Olympics. Welcome back, sports fans. Here we are in China for the second half of the fantastic All-Star Laugh Olympics with the ever-popular rickshaw race as the featured event for a 25-point first prize. Next, a powerhouse ping-pong match. And the final event, a climatical gymnastics contest. As the racers are lining up, let's recap the first half scores. The Yogi Yahooies lead with 60 points. And here's the lineup of those daredevil racers. For the Scooby Doobies, it's Shaggy and the team captain himself, Scooby Doo, wearing roller skates. Next, it's Boo Boo and the captain of the Yahooies, Yogi Bear. And cheating, uh, racing for the really rottens are Dinky and Dirty Dalton. <laughs> now pay attention, savages. This is the cockamamie race route to downtown Hong Kong. It's anybody's race as I see it. The Dirty Daltons are tearing up the street. Now Yogi is making up for lost time with a dazzling display of footwork. A little farther, Scooby, then it's downhill all the way. Get off of me, Scoob. We can't see where we're going. The Scooby Doobies are moving up to the, uh, make that down. Yeah. Hey! But the Rottens are coming into the home stretch, confident of winning. No problem, Yawn. But little do they know that Yogi is getting ready to pass them. Oh, yeah. I heard that. Throw it into no passing, Dirty. You got it, Dick. <laughs> Especially on these oily streets. Hey, Yogi. Yeah, Boo Boo? Watch out for that oil slick. Yeah. No! Yogi's using the old spinneroo technique. Scooby Doo is skating at an incredible speed. What an inspired athlete. The Rottens are holding their lead. Thanks to their wide track wheels, the sneaks. <laughs> Followed by Scooby, who just passed half of the Rottens. Rat! But, oh no! The other half just crossed the finish line, the winner! Now it's Yogi and Scooby racing neck and neck for second place. Scooby has that look of grim determination as he noses ahead. But it's too close to tell who crossed first. Who cares? I won the race. So hold it already! I demand an instant replay. Here's the frame-by-frame -frame replay at the finish. Dinky has crossed the finish line, but without his rickshaw. You can't win without a rickshaw, big fella. That's correct, Mildew. Therefore, the really rottens are disqualified. Rack. Now, for second place, our freeze-frame camera shows Scooby-Doo nosing over the line, while Yogi Bear brings up the rear in reverse. Black. And there you have it, folks. And the winners are the Scooby Doobies. 25 big ones for first place. A big 80 score, even. This will be a bonus event. The winner is going to get 30 points per match and keep on playing until he loses. A steel ping pong paddle? Hmm, I wonder why. You'll find out why. <laughs> and there goes the serve. 
A good return, Blue Falcon. But now Orful is going into a wing ding of a windmill swing. But the Falcon, in a blur of blue, easily returns. It looks like Orful has met his match. The first point scored will decide the winner. No, darling. <laughs> this is it, Orful. Make your play. What? <laughs> Wait, I don't have a... Point for the Rottens. And that brings their score up to 75. Tied with the Yogis and just behind the Scooby Doobies. Losing must be devastating to your superhero image, Blue Falcon. True, Mildew, but no matter. Justice will yet prevail. So far, it's been a close contest. But the last event is going to decide today's winners. Losers, even. Still in the Hong Kong Gymnasium, the last event is about to begin. A true test of an athlete's prowess, gymnastics. Each contestant will be scored on poise and grace. A first-class performer gets 25. A second-class show-in gets 15. And third gets 10. So keep your eyes on the run and score. First up is Daisy Mayhem for the Really Rotten. Fifty, one hundred spins and still spinning, but that's good for only ten points. And for the yogis, here comes Quick Draw on the run. Jokes, I don't horse around. It's a one-hand leap onto the horse, followed by a tailspin. And what now? What's this? Giddy up, horse! Whoa! Amazing! I've never seen frog busting on a gymnasium horse. Me either! Yo! Oh, too bad. The Yogi's Quick Draw is awarded only ten points. Little D.D. I don't believe it. Thrown by a gym horse. I suspect foul play. What else? That rigged, remote-controlled horse is one of my dirtiest tricks. <laughs> Leading off for the Scoobies is the dynamic Dino Mutt. You gotta help me, BFO pals. We're a team. No, Dog Wonder. You're on your own this time. But you can do it. Oh, I can? Do what? I suggest you try a push-up. Okay, Blue Falcon. One push-up. Coming up, up. And... Can I push up high enough? Oh, good grief. Dynamot only pushed one up. That's good for ten points. The second contestant, it's the great Fondu. In first, I shall perform Invisible, a la Kazooie, and bye-bye Fondui. Now, please notice my expertise on the parallel bars. Am I not the greatest? And I've never seen anything like this. But then, I don't even see this. I did it! Come on! I guess we'll have to take his word for it, folks. Amazing, Mo. Amazing, no. Sneaky, yes. Giving great fondue the benefit of the doubt, he is also given 25 points. The Yogi Yahoo's are trying to figure out how they can possibly catch up. Stepping up for the Yogi Yahoo's is Grape Ape, who will perform his specialty, weightlifting. Grape Ape. Not the whole gym building. And he did it! I'm afraid that's a 25-pointer for sure. Now the Yogis are tied for the lead. The Teen Angels are coaching the next Scooby-Dooby contestant, Captain Caveman. And it looks like he's ready. And there he goes, into an incredible aerial whirly do. Then over to the team bar for a nose up. Yes, and look at him go. 100 nose ups in one second, earning the full 25 points for the Scooby-Dooby. After the ping-pong match, the Yogis and the Rockets were tied with 75 points, and the Scoobies led with 80. However, the gymnastics event earned the Rockets 35 points, tying them with the Yogis at 110, behind the Scoobies at 115. 
But those scores are final, even close, even. Not until we see the results of our hidden anti-cheating cameras. The anti-cheat film's ready to roll. And remember, each cheat is worth 20 penalty points. The first cheat was perpetrated by Orville for holding eight paddles instead of one. Then Blue Falcon was given a steel paddle to be magnetized out of his hand by Creepy. The gymnasium force that threw Quickdraw was rigged and remote controlled by the Rottens. Finally, during the gymnastics contest, the Great Fondue was not invisible. He only pretended he was performing, and through his voice, a sheer deception. Now let's see how this adds up, or down, or sideways even. The Rottens and Yogis were tied at 110, with the Scoobies ahead at 115. However, deducting 80 penalty points drops the Rottens down to 30, plus a well-deserved bonus penalty of 30 points for an all-time cheating record. Leaves them with... <laughs> Zilch! Son of a fussy The Yogi Yahooies still have their 110. The Scooby Doobies at 115 points makes them the big winners. It's been just peachy, sports fans, but it's bye-bye for now. Who will be the next champs when the three teams meet again for the coveted gold medal awards? Can the Scoobies do it again? Watch the next exciting, fun-filled sports spectacular with new events and new locations as our athletes compete for the All-Star Laugh Olympics honors. sauce on my niblets corn. It used to run like this. Boy, that runs good! Not anymore. Now it clings. So folks get butter sauce and crisp niblets corn on the same fork. Just put the cooking pouch in boiling water and serve up delicious Green Giant Niblets brand corn in the butter sauce that clings. It won't run. <laughs> no wonder! Tank plug them! Ho, ho. Once upon a summer time, just a dream from yesterday, a boy in his magic golden flute heard a boat from off the bay. Come and play with me, Jimmy, come and play with me, and I will take you on a trip far across the sea. Belonged to a cookie or witch who had in mind the flute to snitch. From her broom broom in the skies, she watched her plans materialize. She waved her wand. The beautiful boat was gone. The skies grew dark, the sea grew rough, and the boat sailed on and on and on and on and on and on. And on. But Puffin Stuff was watching too and knew exactly what to do. He saw the witch's bold attack and as the boy was fighting back, he called his rescue racer crew as often they'd rehearse and off to save the boy they flew. But who would get there first? But now the boy had washed the shore. Puff arrived to save the day, which made the witch so mad and sore. She shook her fist and screamed away. H.R. Puff and Stuff, who's your friend when things get rough? H.R. Puff and Stuff, can't do a little cause you can't do enough. H.R. Puff and Stuff, he's your friend when things get rough. H.R. Puff and Stuff, can't do a little cause you can't do enough. You all dry it off, boy? Yeah, thanks. Gosh, that was a close call. I want to thank you for saving my life. Glad to be of help, Sonny. 
H.R. Puffin stuff. Mayor of Living Island. Terrific! I never met a mayor before. Pleased to meet you, sir. Well, howdy. Howdy, you mayorship. Puffin stuff will do. <laughs> Mr. Puffin stuff? Why did that witch try to capture me? I don't even know her. You must have something she wants, and she can be pretty grabby. But I don't have anything she could possibly want. Oh. oh. Kimberly, get me out of here. What was that? Well, in all the excitement, I forgot Freddy. This is my pal, Freddy. He's the only talking fruit in the world. Please, Jimmy, squeeze the water out of me. I'll get rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right, Freddy? Oh, thanks, Jimmy. Boy, that mean old witch almost drowned us. Well, I'll be horn swaggle, a solid gold talking flute with a diamond skin condition. <laughs> I'll bet you're what she's after. Me? Oh, my, Jimmy. Let's get out of here. Don't worry, Freddy. I won't let her touch you. Puff and stuff, can you help us get away? We better go see Dr. Blinky. Dr. Blinky? He's a man of great knowledge. Also, head of my anti-smog pollution and witch committee. <laughs> here on Living Island. Glad to meet you. There it is, Dr. Blinky's house. We'll go right in. Uh oh, watch out, Jimmy. Quick, run for it. Duck, Jimmy. Watch out! Golly gee, that was awful. I never saw Hal sneeze before. He should cover his door when he sneezes. <laughs> Greetings, Mayor Puff and Stuff. Hello to your little friend. Good to see you, Puffy. You're looking very natural. Hi, boys. How are you? Excuse me, Dr. Blinky. I know you're very busy, but the witch is after my friends, Jimmy and Freddy. Uh, who? I'm Jimmy, and I'm Freddy. Who? Jimmy and Freddy. I know that, fun stuff. You ought to know by now that all owls say who. <laughs> See what I mean? Oops. Excuse me, I've got something cooking. <laughs> oh, careful, Doc. It's too hot. <laughs> oh, 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 my. Oh, 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 my. Those test tubes are right every time. <laughs> Little devils. Well, now. <clears throat> yes, compose. Uh, uh, well, now. <clears throat> What can I do for you? Please, sir, the witch tricked us here to your island to steal Freddy, and we want to escape. The who? The witch, the witch. You know, the ugly lady with the broom. Who? The witch, that's who? I know that. Anyway, these two young fellas want to go home. 
Now, Judy the Frog knows the secret way off Living Island, but the witch has captured her and... Who? Now, don't you start that. <laughs> Judy the Frog. Uh-oh. Looks like we'll have to rescue her from the witch's dungeon. The witch's dungeon? No, no, Jimmy. Let's not go there. She'll grab us. Not with this magic potion I'm brewing. It's guaranteed to protect you from the witch's spells. And it's just about ready. Oh, oh, my God. Is there a doctor in the house? Witchy Pooh, look! Puff and Stuff and Jimmy are heading toward the castle. You'll soon have your golden flute. Oh, it's no fun when it's this easy. Hmm? I've got a job for stupid bat. Keep an eye on the picture. All right, if I can stay up late and watch the scary movie. Okay, and if you're real good, I'll bring you back a roach beef sandwich. <laughs> stupid bat, I want to talk to you. Stand right side up. I am right side up. You're upside down. Oh, never mind you, ding -a -ling. I want you to go out into the forest and keep an eye open for Puff and Stuff and Jimmy. The right cheek, the right cheek, the right cheek. Uh, say, which eye should I keep open? The right or the left? Oh, oh. Any questions, dummy? Now go! I'm off! <laughs> By tonight, I'll be off on a toot with my very own golden toot. <laughs> castle, castle on the moat. Who's the most beautiful witch afloat? Not you, you all go. Oh, you're gonna get yours. <laughs> We don't want the witch to know we're coming. Jimmy, hold that magic potion ready. Gosh, you're not scared, are you? Mayors don't get scared. Why not? We're human. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Here they come. They're walking right into my trap. Calling all evil trees. Calling all evil trees. Do you read me? We, we read you, you all gruesome leader. leader. Puff and Stuff and Jimmy are coming your way. Grab them. I want them taken prisoner, understand? Roger. Witchy Poo. Over and out. <laughs> I think that I shall never see a tree that's as terrifying as me. <laughs> Shut up. Keep quiet. Shh. Here they come. Strangers, how about a nut? No, thanks. How about an orange? Or a peach? Duh, it's them. It's them. <laughs> ooh, 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 the witch wants them prisoner. Grab them. Shut up, you dumb bat. You got us mixed up. My brother's dumb. I'm stupid. Run for it, Jimmy. Help Hurry up. Buddy. I've got him. I've got him. Hold Help. him tight. Grab him. Let him go, you rotten tree. Oh, oh, he kicked me in the roof. Oh, oh, oh. Drop the cat! It's no use! If I don't do it myself, nothing is done around here! Salamander, you're in my power. Let's run for it. Sneeze and we stand and freeze. <laughs> They're crows. <laughs> Gosh, 
Gosh, man, we're prisoners. Well, Jimmy, at least we did get into the witch's dungeon. At least you didn't find Freddy's thanks to you, Puff and stuff. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Oh, it was hot under there. <laughs> Sorry about that, Freddy. Come on, cheer up, fellas. You know, Freddy, it's funny. When we woke up this morning, that beautiful summer morning, who would have thought when we went out to play? We'd start the day in clover, but before the day was over, we'd end up in another world far away. We've always loved adventure, a thrilling and new adventure, a chance to chuck it all behind and run. But now that we're on that brink of, it's funny, but all I think of is wonder what they're doing back home. The truth is, sir, we wish we were back home. I quite agree, I'd like to be back home. Judy! Judy Frog, we were looking for you. What are you all doing here in this terrible dungeon? These are my pals, Jimmy and Freddy. It's a long story, but we're here to rescue you. Oh, how wonderful. Freddy and I were hoping you could show us the magic path off the island. I'd be happy to. But how are we going to get out of here? No one's ever escaped from the witch's dungeon. Gee willikers, Jimmy, we better put on our thinking caps. Oh, oh. What is it, Freddy? Do you have an idea? Yes. Take me over there, over to that window. Hurry! <laughs> Pull me up, Jimmy, as high as you can, up near the bars. I got it. He once sang a note so I broke our milk pitcher. And now he's trying to break the bars. Golly, do you think he can do it's it? It's only chance. Blow, Freddy, blow! Gosh, I hope he doesn't strain anything. Come on, Seymour, make me beautiful. Please, Chiefy, I've only got six hands. Well, just don't stand there. Start using them. What was that? Ooh, that was piercing. They lied. It's been with them all the time. They lied. Lied! Now who's in the castle? <sighs> now, hi! Please let me help. Oh. oh, I'll teach them a lesson. I'll lock them up for a hundred years and melt the key. That almost did it. Problem. Oh well, to the more room. <laughs> Hey, 
Maybe the four winds can help us. Hold up there. This is your mayor talking. We need help. Howdy, partner. We'll be glad to help you. Thank heavens. There's the west wind. Oh, so east wind here. Hi, y'all. I'm right here, too, sugar. Howdy, north and south. Now all together. A one, a two. Uh-uh. <laughs> 